if it's good, feel free to pass that on uh, to others. Uh, I've noticed, um, and I'm not for sure why I would love critique on uh, this, but the numbers have dropped on uh, the amount of people who are watching. So I don't know if I'm uh, not hitting a good spot, if I'm uh, not doing a good job, but I sure would be open to help um, in letting me know if I can do a better job or if the topics aren't uh, applicable to us or if there's other stuff that is, it has nothing to do with me. So if you if you don't mind, let me know. Or if it's uh, this is good tonight, pass the word on. Help us uh, get the word out. Uh, just three or four announcements real quick. I've been talking about prayer requests, so you've heard most of those. Uh, we've got a PLT in Cherryvale uh, on Thursday. And then MNU Homecoming is this weekend, December 2nd. Please lock it in. Um, and um, we'll, be at, we'll be in Joplin for the Christmas banquet. And the Daniel fast is coming the first of the year. Come November, I'm going to talk about prayer and fasting and on the L2. And um, I hope maybe it'll be helpful to all of us. It kind of set the table for December because I know in December, the last Sunday, it's really good to talk about why we're going to step into the prayer and fasting and see what God uh, can do into our journeys. Then I want to, get, I want to share one idea. I've been trying to share this the last couple of days uh, when I figured this out. But if you're if if by chance your church is an election center or if you are in a small town and you can go to uh, the uh, peop the powers that be, um, one of the ideas would be for the big serve would be for you to go into your election center and serve coffee and cookies while people are coming in and out. Uh, that would be an incredible moment because uh, you would have two. 200, 300, 400 people coming through, and they, they're going to come to you. They're going to come by you. You get to say hi to them. And if you you can, you can give them cookies and coffee. It would be quite a deal if you uh, can make it happen. One of the churches, or one of the ideas was, I don't know if there's a church that's doing this or not, uh, they were doing fundraisers. And so they actually set up a stand at the election. People could, when they were leaving, they could buy cookies and cakes and pies and they were using it as a fundraiser. So there's just some crazy ideas uh, to run with tonight. Okay. So um, all of us, I think, have, we, we've dealt with failures in some way or form. And um, what you do with the failure when it happens to you is absolutely crucial. So tonight, I kind of want to look at this idea of a failure and how that applies into our lives and how we can come, how we can use it um, to make us stronger. Many of you, if you're, if you're a basketball fans, you would recognize the name uh, coach K from Duke, who, who is now retired, uh, wrote a book called a leading with the heart. I'm going to use a quote out of that tonight. Um, but um, in, in that leading with your heart, he writes these words, we learn that failure is just part of success. Failure is just part of success. And so um, I think when we look at that and we ad admit that, that failure is going to happen and it's going to happen in my life and how I handle it, what I do with it is crucial. I think that is really essential to all of it. Okay. So Gregory Chance is going to help us tonight uh, with some thoughts on this and others. And uh, let's jump into it. Okay. So when we look at the lessons and the things we can learn, okay, tonight, the first one is move forward, not backward, when failure occurs. Move forward, not backward. Failure is not a finality in you, in your situation, but it can be a, it can be a learning opportunity, okay? So you've got to choose to move forward when failure happens. Um, all of us all, literally, all of us have gone through failure. We've all had times when something didn't work. And um, as, as we have gone through that and we learn uh, from that, uh, sometimes that lesson uh, that we learn is, uh, is, is lodged into our hearts, into our minds in a strong way. Um, if you've ever had a child that was playing around something that was hot, and you said to them, don't touch. And as soon as you turned around, they they looked at you and they looked at what was hot. 
and they did exactly what you told them not to do, and they stuck their finger or their hand or their tongue where, when it shouldn't have been there, and the next thing you know, you've got this screaming, bloody murder kid screaming around, and he's holding his hand or her hand, and she or he has stuck that hand on that stove or that oven or that fireplace, and now we have burnt skin going on. The good news of that is that will heal. The better news is they won't ever do that again. And so sometimes when we have failures and we have tough lessons, it teaches us things that we need to know on down the line. Okay. So number two is about failures. Come clean about your mistakes. Come clean about your mistakes. Don't blame others when something goes wrong with in your situation. Okay. So uh, I just come into this position and my uh, mentor, Crawford Howe, Dr. Crawford Howe, and I were talking and uh, something had happened here in the office. And um, honestly, uh, now this is, this is, it, it's, it's, it's a view. Okay. So I looked at this situation and he said something to me and I said, well, you know, uh, this, this happened because such and such did such and such. And that's where I, why I'm in this place. And he paused, as he as he often would do. <laughs> and then he said, I don't want to ever hear you blame anybody for anything ever again. Do you understand me, Brother Rhodes? <laughs> yes, sir. I got it. <laughs> so I have caught myself getting ready to say, well, you know, they never mind. And I'm, I've learned to quit doing that. In fact, as we were in a situation the other day, something happened. And I said, you know what? That's really on me. I'll take responsibility for that. And I just think that when we do that, if we can clean up that, it takes the ownership and puts it on us and we can fix it later on. Now, in this new book uh, by Coach K, he tells a story. Those of you who are basketball people know that he was in West Point. Uh, he came from a very poor home. It's a great story, uh, but he and his buddy are in their uniform. They're walking across the parking lot. His friend steps in a mud puddle, slaps the mud and the water onto his pants. Now, for you and I, that's not a big deal. We just keep going. And that's what they did until he heard the word halt. And two senior officers were standing behind him. And they said, uh, cadet, is there a reason why your pants and shoes are not clean? And he knew at this point there were three answers they can give. <laughs> and the best answer that he would give is, no, sir, there is not. And they proceeded to talk to him for 30 minutes. Then they gave him demerits, wrote him up. And he's sending back to the to the barracks. Here's what's here's what's funny about this is <clears throat> he said at that point, I wanted to say, my friend, if I ever get hold of him, I'm gonna kill him. Okay, because this this is his fault. He said, I went back and I'm sitting on the bunk, and I said, you know, when that happened, I probably should have just turned around and went and cleaned my shoes and my pants off and came back out. If I would have done that. I wouldn't have gotten into the mess that I was in. Even though he did it, if I would have done this, I wouldn't be in this place. And he was talking about how that even though something happens to you, if you can make a decision to go and get it corrected and do, do your best in it, that it will make a difference later on in your journey. So it's a great story, great storyline, okay? So take responsibility, uh, don't blame others. Number three, when something, got, when something bad has happened, forgive yourself, okay? We often talk about in Scripture, okay, we, we have an altar call or somebody needs to be forgiven from, you know, from, uh, from sin or whatever the uh, issues going on. And we talk about having going to an altar or praying and asking God to forgive you. And then we always reflect back on that Scripture that says, if you have sin against your brother, leave your sacrifice and go take care of it with your brother, then come back to the altar and make it right with God. So there is this issue of making it right with others, making it right with God. And I think the hardest one that we ever have to deal with 
is not necessarily those two. I think the hardest one we have to deal with is when we have to forgive ourselves. When we've gone through failures, we've made bad decisions, we didn't do things the right way, and we know that we didn't do it. I think when we have to deal with that, I think that's really hard on us to forgive ourselves of what we've done. And so forgiving yourself is really crucial in this issue of failure. Number four, avoid self-sabotage. Avoid self-sabotage. So making choices today that will ensure a better tomorrow, that, that, that will help us resist the urge to find comfort in food or drink. Um, one of the things that I've seen and I'm learning is, um, and I just read another article today, the, the chemicals that happen in our brains when we start watching certain things on our phones are the same endorphins that happen when we uh, get stressed out and we eat or we get stressed out and we go and spend money or we get stressed out and we go and whatever, okay? Uh, even to this point of taking drugs, alcohol, those things are the same endorphins that drive this are the same things that drive us to do those other things, okay, which is really fascinating to me. Uh, one study that I read today talked about somebody who is locked onto your phone, the brain waves are so reduced, it takes, now get, this is crazy, okay? After you've done it for a, a period of time, it takes seven years for that damage in your brain to recover, but it can recover. Dr. Kane, uh, Carolyn Kane talks about that the brain has the ability to recover from damage that occurs when either uh, like stuff like pornography, sex, drugs, uh, those kind of things have damaged us. The brain has the ability to recover. Uh, my understanding is there's only one part of our body that does not recover when it's damaged, and that is our ears. Uh, the hairs, the, the hearing part of our ears that hair that's damaged never grows back. But in other parts, we can grow back. And I would say to you tonight that when your heart is damaged in failure, that your heart can grow back too. Don't let anybody keep you from healing and finding hope and restoring your journey uh, the way it should be, okay? So when, when you're uh, trying to avoid self-sabotage, one of the things that often happens is, is, um, is that we have to push past procrastination. Um, I personally, uh, for years, when I had something hard to do, I would think about it, think about it, and think about it, and then I would postpone it to the next day, and then I might wait till the next day. And finally, I was in a seminar, and um, a guy was talking about first things first, and I was like, oh. and so, uh, and it was Bill Hybels who was talking about it. And he said, if you will deal with the hard things first, it will change the rest of the day. And so here's what I've, I've made a rule. If I have a hard issue, I will deal with it as soon as I can. Uh, the, the next opportunity, that's right. I will deal with it as soon as I can. And what I found is it relieves me of stress the rest of the day. So I function better and I think better. So dealing with those hard issues first gets uh, puts away the, the procrastination and helps me, I think, makes me a better person um, all the way around. So choose to feel hopeful, not hopeless, and seek guidance from any objective source that you can, whether that's a friend, reading, uh, materials, whatever will help you to avoid self-sabotage. Number five, shun imperfection. I'm sorry, shun perfection, shun perfection. Identify underlying beliefs that drive the need for perfection. We've all been around people who are perfect, or they think they are, or everything that they want around them is needs to be perfect. Uh, the room needs to be perfect. The clothes need to be perfect. And they absolutely wear people out uh, by the pressure that they put on themselves and on others because they want that to take place. So you've got, again, Dr. Carolyn Leaf talks about this idea of re, retraining your brain, listening to your thoughts, 
receiving compliments and striving for excellence, not perfection. And I want to go back now to just one thing. Um, often when, we, when somebody um, comes to you and says to you something like this, that was a really good message today. Thank you very much. Okay. That was a really good lesson today in Sunday school. I really appreciate it. I think most of us have a tendency to go, oh, it, you know, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. Or it was because, or, oh, it was somebody else, or it was all the book, or, or it wasn't that good, but thank you anyway. We we start putting down the compliment they've given to us. Okay, now think about this. How many of you like to go and compliment somebody and them to tell you, oh, no, nah, no. Nah. Come on. We don't, we want them to receive the compliment, right? Okay. The same thing happens when they receive, when they give it to you, please get to the place in your own self-esteem that you can receive a compliment when people give it to you. Okay. Don't push it back, receive the blessing and then bless them because they have blessed you in, in all of that. Okay. Number six, let me jump to six. Banish the inner critic. Some of you will recognize the name John Ortberg. Um, he used to talk about the shadow self um, and how dangerous the shadow self was. It's not the person. It's not the. It's not the figure that everybody sees. It's the figure behind people. It's the. It's the personality that nobody sees that you struggle with. It's the battle inside of your head when somebody does something to you and you want to fight back. It's when they say something to you and you want to respond back. He talks about the shadow self is the person that comes out and wants to do and have their way. I think if we're not careful, the shadow self has a tendency and wants to take over our own lives. Okay. Okay. Don't listen to that voice. Don't let the shadow self win. Banish the inner critic inside of you and learn to be free, even in the midst of a failure. Okay. Come out of that realizing I, I, I can learn something out of this. Number seven, recognize false guilt. I would say to you tonight, uh, now this is not in your notes, some of this stuff that, that we're getting ready to get into, is I would, I would I would say to you, don't take on shame because of failure. Don't take on shame because of failure. And don't make room for condemnation in your own heart. Romans 8 reminds us that that this idea of condemnation, this idea of not measuring up that you're bad, you don't have any value, you'll never make anything, you're not a success. I think when we're dealing with failures, Satan loves to jump on, and number one, he loves to, to produce on you or in you or through you or throw it on you. He loves to give you shame, where you, you, you wear this idea of shame about what happened in your life or what occurred to you it's not your fault but you you have this idea of shame but also this idea of condemnation all right you can be free from that and you do not have to wear that that heavy ball and chain on your life of of those things when you have gone through failure okay number eight tame your toxic emotions okay when failure happens and you have a tendency to say, oh, I'm such an idiot, I never do anything right. If it's going to happen to anybody, it's going to happen to me. Okay, we, I, we've either all said that or we've heard somebody say that. Okay, those toxic emotions can build up in you and it can lead you to places, even, even to a place of depression or burnout. Because you begin to think you have no value, you're not important, you'll never matter, you can't fix anything, you're, you're a terrible leader, why are you doing this, why would God call me, and it's the whole Moses syndrome all over again, why did you choose me, I can't even talk. And so Satan, I believe, loves to take those moments and use them to destroy us if he can, okay? Okay. 
Number nine, I would encourage you to, even in the midst of failure, refuse to give up. Uh, if you have, uh, I can only relate to this to, to, to I guess, um, the illustration is best for me with, with athletics. But I, I know uh, those guys that do weight training and do and do all those things, I know they, they put on weights. And the whole idea is the breakdown of the vessels in the muscle system. And when it breaks down and then blood comes back in, it's healing, but it's getting bigger and larger and stronger uh, when they're running track. I know you get to a spot where you go and you go and you go and you think you can't go anymore. And the coach pushes you to go just one step farther. Uh, there are times in all of our lives when we didn't think we could go on and somehow we pushed through and we got to the other side. And I would, I would encourage you, no matter who you are, or what's going on in your life tonight, if you're in one of those spots, refuse to give up tonight. Don't give up because of failure. Don't let failure win on all of us. Okay. Number 10, focus on today. Jesus taught us in his prayer, give us this day, not tomorrow, this day, our daily bread. So I, I would say to you, focus on today. Matthew 5 reminds us, quit worrying about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. The Lord cares about you today. So be a victor today in your life. 11 is rejoice rather than resent. For all of us, we can't go back to those things that happened in our life when, when we had the failures. And I, I don't know about you, but I could, I could start listing failures and the list would get really long. A failure either as a father, failure as a, a husband, failure as a leader, uh, failure as a DS. I, you know, we could write down, and you could, you know, you could probably help me write my own my own list. Okay, but there are people around you who could help write your list. Okay, we all have experienced failures. Okay, if you are carrying any of that junk tonight or today, whenever you're listening to the recording, if you're carrying any of that stuff because of the past, can I encourage you tonight to let it go? If you have to spend some time by yourself tonight or tomorrow morning, don't continue to carry the past, okay? You can't go back. Let the past stay in the past and quit bringing it into the future or even into the present, okay? That'll preach in case you're wondering. Otherwise, let the past be in the past. If we can get through some of these um, failures, we can begin to dream big about living now. Okay? So if some board member has chewed on you or some lay person said something that was just out of place, is out of time, is out of character, they should never have said anything. Okay? If you dwell on that, it will reduce your ability to lead. If you can let it go, you can begin to dream about what God can do and would do in the life of your church and the life of your people. So dream big and live in the now. Number 13, do your best. That's all he ever asked. Okay? When you understand that you that you do your best, then the 14 is, is simply this. If you if you compare yourself, stop it. Don't compare. Don't compare yourself. Don't compare you to somebody else. Dare not to compare. I think this phrase says dare to compare, but I would say to you, dare not to compare. It's probably wrong here. Dare not to compare. Don't compare failure to failure or your past to your present. Let that thing go. Don't find yourself doing that, okay? In John Maxwell's book uh, that was a bestseller uh, years ago, he wrote the book Failing Forward, Failing Forward. John Maxwell's book, If You're Going to Fail, and You Will, he reminds us, fail 
forward. Fail forward. All of us are going to go through failures. But once we acknowledge that this is going to happen and how we handle it really determines our future. Okay. Everybody is going to go through this. Okay. So if you've been hard on yourself, if you, if someone else has been hard on you, can I just tell you to let it go tonight so that you can dream big, so you can do big things for the kingdom and you can, um, you can let the past be in the past. Is that fair? Okay. Um, so I, I just want to say thanks for joining tonight. And um, if it helps you, pass it on. Uh, if it doesn't, I, you know, don't talk about it, okay? Um, but I, I want to do, do say thanks for joining us because we know that leaders who learn always make other leaders better. So thank you for learning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being available. And my prayer for you is that God's richest blessings will be upon you, no matter what you've gone through, that God will help you to keep pushing through and there will be victory in Christ for you, your ministry, and the life of your family. So Jesus, we thank you tonight that you are the ultimate victor. And what looked like a failure at the tomb was really the entrance into success. And so for all of us, help us to move through failures, through the tomb, through the dark night, into the light, from the cross to the tomb to being empty. Help us to move through that process so we stand in the light victorious in you. We're grateful that you didn't give up and you didn't quit. And you didn't surrender. And we're telling you tonight, we won't either. In Christ's powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining. And um, I'm going to stay on if anybody's got any questions or anything you want to ask. Oh, somebody's got Grandpa. Got, got him wrapped around his arm. Right, What a deal right there. Scott's got, what a deal. Oh, there's Austin. So um, any questions or any, I guess I should, should have said it, any thoughts, any questions anybody has before you get off? I missed number 14. Dare to compare, or, or I would I would rather say don't compare. Be... Don't be caught in comparing. That book by uh, John Maxwell, Failing Forward, is a great book. I've probably given eight or nine copies of that away to other folks in the church. Yeah. It's 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 a good book. Yeah. And this is Coach K's new book that uh, is out. And uh, if you like sports at all, uh, this was a this is a good one so far. Coming out of poverty, tough times, into West Point, uh, what a story. Uh, that he's telling and the experiences. Oh my word. Great, great little small trinkets all through that book so far. Okay. All right. Well, you guys have a great rest of the evening. If I can do anything for you, let me know. Thank you.